in general, eat these foods. And then here are some unexpected foods that you could just see responses all over the map. Um, I think once you've once you've done a lot of these tests and with this, and you've done say the Zoe scores and in my book I, I go through my personal scores for many of these foods and you can see the range in fruits and the range in breads and the range and you know once you've studied it it does start to make sense that you can sort of guess you know which fruit for example is going to be fine and which is not and I used to eat bananas all the time and grapes and uh, grapes were one of the worst things I could have picked. Right? You know, they're supposed to be for healthy. You know, you give them to sick people to make them healthier, but actually uh, they're just pure bo sugar bombs. Um, and I, I did lots of experimentation, but it, it, it works out that actually, depending on your sugar sensitivity, they do rank pretty well when you look at the, co the comparison of sugar level to fiber in them. And I don't think there's a huge difference between people uh, in, in how the foods rank. That's what we've not found so far in the Zoe program. Although I know other people do think there is much more variability, but it's perhaps less than people think. But generally it's people not knowing that that food is particularly sugary and that most people don't realize that you know bananas have actually quite low in fiber. I think there's more fiber in a cup of coffee than there is in a, in a banana. Um, uh, and and but if I switched to pears or apples, I didn't get any sugar spikes. Um, and you know that should be my go-to snack. Um, mm -hmm. Most berry most berries for me are fine. I think the key is to not overdo any one food and that's the other philosophy that i've developed and zoe has as well is the idea of eating a diverse range of foods and um the one thing everybody you know there are some universal rules that i think um everybody can benefit from regardless of whether they're sugar responders or fat responders it and regardless of age is you know, try and go for 30 plants a week um, that seems to be the sweet spot for gut health. And that includes nuts and seeds, herbs, spices, which count as individual plants. So it's not as hard as it originally sounds. Most people you know, frown and, or faint when I, when I tell them. Uh, and it's quite fun to try and do that. And that also means you're not focusing too much on you know, uh, some weird berry or uh, other that, that you might be overdoing. You're getting plenty of fiber. Uh, the second thing is eat the rainbow, get different colors. So you're getting different chemicals in the form of polyphenols, which we know are good. Everyone will benefit from switching their cooking oil to extra virgin olive oil, for example, which is super high in polyphenols. And uh, drinking coffee is a really good source of polyphenols and it's proven to be good for you. Um, all berries, nuts, seeds, these are all good. Dark chocolate is good. Uh, third thing is eating fermented foods. Everyone would benefit from eating more fermented foods regularly and often, um, regardless of the state of their, their gut and their gut microbes. Um, fourthly, um, having a, a time-restricted eating window so that you eat within ideally 10, but stretch it to 12 hours if you need to so that you're not snacking all the time so that your gut doesn't have a chance to recover overnight really important everyone will benefit from that and they can decide when their 10 hour window is whether they're morning or evening people and then finally everyone would benefit from reducing ultra processed foods in their diet uh, because of the harmful chemicals that are replacing the real food and that's because they have these extra effects, not only directly on our gut microbes, but together they make us overeat and uh, are tricking our, our brains into eating much more than we should do. So I think those five rules are true for everybody, regardless of uh, personalization. And they will probably get you know, at least halfway there. 
in your health journey and um, the other half you get from uh, knowing your own scores, your own personalization and what you can do.